It's Sunday morning, and every decent man and woman is listening to Test Miles with Nick Miles on FM News 101 KXL. Buckle in. Sunday morning, time to talk cars for the next 60 minutes on your weekly automotive experience. I'm Nick Miles, and you are listening to America's Automotive Radio Show. Test Miles, locally created, nationally celebrated. This morning's team of misfits, rapscallions, ne'er-do-wells, and junior interns, Genia the intern, Sean Walker, and Oli the Viking Volvo seller, all in the studio this morning. Let's start off the show this morning by talking about cars that we have been test driving over this week. I have a new love child in my life. It is the BMW X4. Now, I heard a lot of criticism when BMW came up with their X4. The, a lot of people saying it was very small, it was tight, there wasn't enough space. You're all wrong. There's loads of space in this vehicle when you understand what it is. So BMW took their x Three and SUV, and they put a hatch on the back. That becomes the X4. The X5 with a hatch on the back is the X6. So it's really just the SUV with a version of the vehicle that has a hatch on the back. I'm European. I love hatches. Not, uh, not many Americans like station wagons and hatches. I just find them useful, coupish, and very utility-type vehicles. They're, it's easier to get things in and out. Uh, my dog had surgery this week, uh, put the back seats down, put a blanket in the back, laid her in the back, drove her home. Couldn't have put her in the trunk. That wouldn't have been right if it was a sedan. But no, the X4, uh, my favorite car. So what is it? It's BMW's four-door SUV coupe. It has distinctive styling, very wide, uh, powerful, um, fuel-efficient, comfortable, very, very uh, solid construction. Uh, the back seats have been criticized for being small, but if I wanted a lot more back seat, I'd be buying the X6. Uh, limited visibility out the back. That is true. Like in any coupe, it's hard to see out of the back. Turbocharged 2-liter, 4-cylinder, 3.0 uh, turbocharged 6-cylinder is available in the vehicle. Uh, 240 horsepower out of that 4 and 300 out of the 6. Four is quite adequate. Eight-speed automatic transmission. It does have all-wheel drive, liking it even more uh, during the snow. A lot of people say during the snow, four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive is very necessary. Uh, Sean and I spent a week in Montreal last week. Was it last week? The week before last. Yeah, last um, week. Or a we, week and a half ago. And we did snow driving. And people were like, you have to have an all-wheel drive vehicle in snow driving. Not only is the all-wheel drive vehicle ha great in the snow, but they're actually great all year round just driving. They handle a lot better. Uh, the Ferrari FF, a great example of that. Handles much better in the turns, sticks to the road, nice tight corners, just because of the all-wheel, partly because of the all-wheel drive system. Let's talk about fuel economy in the BMW X4. I was getting about... Mm, 25 miles a gallon out of it. It tops out at 28 on the highway uh, for the t uh, four litre, and it's about 27 on the highway for the three litre. It's competition. Really hard to find out what its competition is, but the Toyota Venza is really the only competition, although that's not one. The Acura ZDX, which I think evaporated last year, they don't make it anymore, um, that was competition to this vehicle too, although they're a little bigger. So it's hard to find a true competitor to the X4. It does come in a 2.8, a 2.8i and a 3.5i, um, and $44,700 is the starting price of this vehicle. Also uh, in love with the second vehicle I got a test drive this week, which was the Acura ILX. Now, the ILX was one of the first subcompact uh, or compact uh, sedan, luxury sedans in America. The, what's the name of the Buick version of it? Oh. Uh, Can't remember. What's the Buick one? The Buick have a version of the vehicle. Is it, um, the Regal? No, 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 no. The little one. Verano. Uh, Verano, Verano, yeah. The Verano. That's it. We, we worked it out eventually. We got <laughs> it. The Buick Verano is kind of this luxury compact vehicle as well. So the ILX, uh, first generation, great starter. Good seller for them, too, for Acura. But great starter in this compact luxury field. A lot of the millennials going to compact luxury vehicles, uh, people who are getting to the end of their careers thinking, I don't need a giant full-size XJ or a giant sedan. A small compact luxury sedan is great. Uh, Well-priced, but it was lacking in a little bit of uh, power and handling as well. The new one, a four-door compact sedan, is uh, really, really well put together. It looks so much bigger and uh, more 
luxurious than it actually is, although it is luxurious, uh, but it is quite small. The ride quality, spirited handling, uh, more efficient and more powerful engine. The upscaled interior has been much improved. Six-speed manual, no longer available. Now it gets the punch from the engine with just an automatic, and it really puts itself on the plate with things like the Audi A3, uh, the CLA from uh, Mercedes-Benz, those type of vehicles. Uh, 201 horsepower out of a 2.4-liter four-cylinder engine, eight-speed automatic, uh, front-wheel drive only. Like to see an all-wheel drive in this. 29 miles a gallon is the uh, combined, 36 on the highway. Uh, again, those competitors are the Mercedes CLA, Audi A3, BMW 2 Series, and Buick Verano. 2.4 uh, um is the uh, so the, 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 the versions of the car, the trim levels of the car, is the, the, the DCT, there's the premium, there's the technology package as well in this, and it's all the 2.4 engine with the 8-speed. All right, starting price, $27,900. Sean, what have you been driving this week? I was driving a big house. No, I was driving the 2015 Cadillac Escalade Platinum, and it... It, like I said, it's a house. It's it sits up there. Seven passenger, full size SUV, luxury SUV. Some of the good things about this car is it has a remote start, so these chilly mornings that we've had warm the car up before we even get in the vehicle, and we'll be talking about that even later in the show. Um, suede interior. This is the first full size luxury SUV to have center airbags, which includes if you get in a wreck, an airbag will pop out of the front seat so that you don't hit heads with whoever's sitting up front with you. Yeah, I don't like to hit heads with the person. Well, sitting next to you. I mean, it's a nice safety feature. It has a 6.2 liter V8, 420 horsepower, 460 pounds feet of torque, can tow up to 8,000 pounds, eight speed auto. Four-wheel drive. The only competition, I mean, it goes up against, like, the Mercedes GL, Infiniti GX, or QX80, and Lincoln Navigator, but I don't think those guys even compete with this vehicle. What? what? You're missing one. Well, Land Rover. Or Range Rover. Range Rover, yeah, but that's a total you. different category. It doesn't what? have a third row. Well, the Range Rover, the full-size Range Rover does. Oh, it does now? Sorry, yeah. haven't been full in Full-size does. Rover. But Did still, it, I think those are two different categories, where the Cadillac's more luxury kind of limousine style and the rovers you're going to go off-roading and take anything on now now can you drive it with both hands or do you have to just have your left hand on it and then leaning to your right that's can, a hard question Can you have both hands on the steering wheel you know, or just the funny one? thing is as i was driving this vehicle i had to have it on the hip-hop stations all the time sure. i don't think i could i had it on any other station but hip-hop you're disgusting i am but you know some of the tech in it's the 4g lt wi-fi has three blu-ray screens in the vehicle um their q system which you can change your whole navigation set up, set up yeah, and you customize so you can, it to you like it. You can it. choose the, the graphics package, right? Yeah, and display things how you really like. It also has magnetic ride control, which uh, goes after the road and makes sure that you're floating on air, basically. It analyzes yeah, it the road adjusts, a thousand times yeah. a second. It adjusts uh, the ride feel. Yeah. The starting price for the Platinum is $91,875. The one I was test driving is $94,585, which comes to, it's a house. You could buy a three-bedroom, four-bedroom house in Texas for that price. Would you have, um, my question is, would you buy this or the Range Rover? Because they're about the same price. It, it just depends. Like, I really... After driving this vehicle for a week, I fell in love with it. It just, it was a nice ride. I mean, my, the only down, like I have two nice, two ups and one down for it. My ups are a nice ride. And I love the vibrating seats that for your blind spot will tell you if you're venturing over into a lane, it gives you a little vibrating pulse in the seat instead of giving you an annoying beat. That's why you were swerving in sure. lanes when I saw yeah. you this week. I, I like my butt getting vibrated. The one down for it is they have like the 360 camera <coughs> and the camera quality on them is kind of poor. And I think for a vehicle like that, they should have better quality. Nissan's uh, 360 cameras are crystal clear where this one, it looked like you're in the fog the whole time. See, now you have the competition. You have all these, uh, all these big uh, uh, SUVs and these really top-notch SUVs. And, you know, I have to throw kind of the G-Wagon. You, I mean, you're getting close to, you know, another, what, five, ten thousand dollars You can get a, a G-Wagon. starts at 115 I think, doesn't it? I, th I, I thought it was 105 is what I was comparing it to. But you're in that same ballpark. Yeah. You're talk, talking about six figures. What's ten thousand dollars between friends when you're spending a hundred? Yeah. Let me break that down uh, in 60 months. You know, what are we looking at? <laughs> 
I don't know. I mean, like <laughs> a lot. Look, look, can we more, drag it out to eighty four? More than Maybe a radio we can drag host. Drag it out to eighty four. Yeah, more than more than a radio host. I've always afford. been like the person. Like I would buy the Tahoe if I was going to buy this and spend that extra money in customizing the Tahoe. But actually, after driving the Escalade, I don't think I would even want the Tahoe. I really enjoyed the Escalade and everything yeah. that came with it. All right, we got to get to a break early. What's the deal of the week? No one? Yes? No? Um, I have a, I don't have one. You don't? No, we'll Nothing be back good. next week with uh, some, some new, some really some hot new ones, deal of the yeah, week features, We actually have a new sponsor for deal of the week. So. Everything I have is a deal of the week. Yeah. <laughs> go to DLR Nordic and get a deal from Oli. And ask for the Oli discount as That's well. That's right. You're listening to Test Miles and FM News 101 KXL. I'm Nick Miles. When we come back, we're going to talk about coffee and very, very smart cars. In Cars and Coffee, Portland's own display of what we own in the city. That's next when Tess Miles continues. I'm Nick Miles. Test Miles, like NASCAR, but with one right turn. Testmiles.com. I sometimes wish that we had cameras in the studio because uh, this morning Oli's going to do the fun fact and he's been limbering up, he stood up, he pushed his chair back, he's been doing leg exercises. Welcome back to Test Miles on FM News 101 KXL Automotive Radio Show, live from our studios in downtown Portland. For all the latest automotive news followers at Twitter, it's Test Miles. Here is a fun fact you can impress your friends with, Nick. The very first Ferrari built by Enzo Ferrari was the Auto Avio Castruzioni, 815, built in 1940. How, what's it called again? The Avio Castruzioni. All right. Uh, we, we've been debating how this is See, pronounced. All that practice does pay off. Five hours this morning. <laughs> all right. Every Saturday, legions of car faithful gather for an event in Portland called Cars and Coffee. Mark Scholz is here as one of the gatekeepers of the event. Mark, uh, you've joined us before. Thanks for coming to our broadcast center in downtown Portland. Uh, remind us of exactly what Cars and Coffee is. Cars and Coffee is a grassroots community-based event happens every Saturday, rain or shine or even snow, and it's just simply a gathering of folks who like cars, conversation, caffeine, and sunshine. So they come together, they park their cars, and they all wander around and and R and put pictures on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, you see cool stuff that you probably couldn't see anywhere else, right? Exactly. So tell me a little bit about um, some of the cool vehicles that have been attending recently since we last had you on. Boy, we, we've had some amazing cars along the way. We are fortunate that many of the, if, if there's generally an exotic or hyper-exotic in Portland, it will show up. Uh, Bugatti Veyron has shown up. We've had the first 918, Porsche 918 Spider has shown up. Back in the day, Carrera GTs. At one point, we had three of them on the lot. Wow. You know, we just had some amazing cars. Several McLarens, you name it. Sir. Of course, at the same time, we also have just, just a, an abundance of other and broad diversity of other cars. If it's Porsches, BMWs, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, sure. It's kind of like a free car show, isn't it? Pretty much, yes. Except you can't steal things from the car or sit in them or lick them or do the things that all the kids do at the, the Generally car frowned upon, yes. <laughs> yeah. Generally frowned upon. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what you need to do if you have a cool car and you think it should be at Cars and Coffee. Well, right now, as I say, it's simply an open parking lot. We're, it's extremely well attended. You simply have to show up and be there. Um, that we don't regulate where to park, although sometimes groups of cars and clubs do want to park together. We don't currently allow saving of spaces. You just pull in, first come, first serve. People stand in the spaces so you can't pull them in because they're saving them for their buddy. Is that the uh, that's it? Once again, generally fr <laughs> frowned upon. <laughs> frowned upon. What's what's the rules about attending? What what do you have to do? What what can't you do? I mean, what what's the general parameters? So presumably, you you know, you don't take people for test drives and that it, sort of thing. It's it's they're really common sense rules. First of all, be respectful when you enter and leave the parking lot. Just drive like you would in a parking lot. Sure. Second of all, be respectful of other cars. We don't allow folks to come in and put flyers on cars and touch other cars and put things under the, under the windshield wipers. That I wouldn't appreciate that in my car. I would hope no others would do that to theirs. And it's not really a salesy event, is it? Because you no. don't have tables no, or umbrellas or banners. Or there, currently, there is no selling, no business, no promotion. That It's just simply a community gathering. I like that idea, too. Uh, now, there's a local Starbucks coffee, right? That's, that's how you supply yourselves with caffeine? Correct. The caffeine comes from the Starbucks... Uh, for the Starbucks store that is there. I'm just, in, I'm interested, how much coffee do you think they sell on a, on a weekday? A in lot. Actually, <laughs> actually, on Saturday mornings, they have the highest serving rate 
they call it a cap rate, the number of caps they put on cups in the 30-minute window. Right. They are the highest cap rate in the entire Portland metro area. Their measurement is they want to shoot for 30 caps per 30 minutes. Wow. Our, our Coffee average, a minute. Our average there is 73 caps per 30 minutes. Really? Um, is, there a, is there a drive-through at that one? No, there's not. All right, so it's just a walk-in. So what's the line like? Out the door. <laughs> They have had to add one full-time staff person just because of us there. And just this week, talk to the manager. They're going to add a second. Wow. Additional than That's, what they would uh, normally have. I'd like to see their milk delivery on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> the truck backs up there and they look like eight people carrying the milk in. Uh, let's talk about some of the more special cars that you've seen at the event. Are you seeing cars that are high in value or just rare? Both. Again, high value and rare for some of the hyper exotics, the 918, the Bugatti, then we see some just unique cars, some really, you know, the, the first M4 that's going to be in Portland would be would have been there. Uh, we, see, we see one of one, one of two type of cars. Doesn't necessarily make them always the highest value, but they're definitely unique. I noticed that there's a kind of a lot of stuff that's going on that's kind of cool uh, as far as trucks and those, those things as well. There's <laughs> the a lot of All right, team's got some questions. Genia, what's your question? My question is, my question is, what is the, what is... The highest number of cars that were there in one day. <laughs> that would, we believe, have been yesterday. We were probably somewhere around 350 cars. All right, Oli. Um, is there a lot of cool Volvos there? Yes, there are cool Volvos there. So, like, what 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 would be a cool Volvo? <laughs> oh, like, like a, a 1940s. Actually, there, there there's a recently there was one that was built by one of our regulars, Nick. He had a black Amazon that he has just absolutely reworked and redone, and it is. Gorgeous. You could eat off the car. Oh, he put a bib on. He's drooling. He's drooling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean. Now, is it just cars you can buy from dealerships, or is there any kind of custom cars there as well? There's some cool custom cars as well. Yesterday, we had two pickups show up, sort of a rat rod theme with both of them. Um, we've got high-end exotics, and bright green Lamborghini Huracan was there, all the way to custom-blown Camaros by one of the local shops. What's, so let's talk about what would be... Uh, the most, the highest value of a car there because we know the, the the Veyron I think the Veyron that was in Portland is about one point four the new Veyron's like two point four million depends on what trim level you get so what sort of value are we looking at oh for both of those for the the nine eighteen and the Veyron those are our highest value cars that were there clearly so several one point something million sure all right uh, how do we find cars and coffee before we run out of time there's a website portlandcarsandcoffee.com that will redirect you to the site that we're using excellent all right you can find out more about that want a free car show that's the place to go you're listening to test miles on fm news 101 kxl i'm nick miles Tweet us, friend us, love us, all at testmiles.com. Live from our studios in downtown Portland on a Sunday morning, America's Car Radio Show. If you'd like to be part of the Car Nation, then join us on Facebook at Test Miles ENT, Test Miles Entertainment. All right, Genia, go with your fun fact. Here's a fun fact you can press your friends with. Four car companies make up the Audi car company logo, where each ring represents each one of the companies that Audi merged with in 1932. DKW, Horsch, Wanderer and Audi are the four companies that represent that are represented in the Quattro. This was also known as the Auto Union. All right, that's Porsche, not Porsche. And it sounds very close. It sounds like we say Porsche. I was told by the guys at uh, at Porsche that a Porsche is something you sit on and watch the sunset. A Porsche is something you drive and don't let it happen again. Oh, I'm really sorry. All right, so last year, Portland Auto Show was snowed out. So this year, when the show opened, we had a, a two-year pent-up energy of Portlanders who wanted to rush down and be part of the show. They had all those symptoms of sitting on their backside in the snow for a year. So when the doors opened, the crowns flooded into this year's show. And, of course, we broadcasted live from the show. Our Project Discovery was in the show right at the front doors. So, uh, you know, Project Discovery, big deal for us. Uh, and Peter Clover is here from Mobile West, who did the interior and the audio from that. You manned the show, Peter, for project, you know, for us during that. You stood there, you took the abuse of everybody who wanted to sit in it and ask you a million and one questions like, 
what color is it and who did the logos and how does that stitching get into the seats and it, is your mom sew with a needle and all those type of things those <laughs> questions so thank you for doing that first of all uh so just just reminder or to remind everybody what project discovery is we took a 2002 Land Rover Discovery and we wanted to make it into a luxury dog transportation. So Peter and his team gutted the inside. They completely did the inside. Very cool seats, carbon fiber headliner, uh, test miles sewn onto the back of the seats, beautiful embroidery, lots of door sills. And then he put a Odyssey high-end Italian sound system in the car which really made the thing pop on the inside, put an iPad mini on the dash, uh, all the mod cons that you'd expect in a car, like Bluetooth and all that stuff was installed. Uh, and then we had it wrapped and we had a, a big gun on the back of the car which shot tennis balls at 300 yards and we had it at the auto show. So, Peter, tell me a little bit about what the reaction was to the vehicle. You know, the reaction was astounding, okay? It, it really... It blew me away. We had people coming up wanting to open up their checkbook and buy that car as it sat <laughs> wait, on wait. the floor. How am I right finding there. out about this right now? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, would, we could have sold that and bought another one. Well, <laughs> we can still make that work. All Actually, right. it, it, it alluded to everything that I that I've been developing Mobile West to be because we're actually evolving from Mobile West Car Audio and restyling to Mobile West Autocraft. All right. Right, because the reaction at the auto show and everything that, you know, I felt about our industry going forward is, you know, one out of ten people loves music. Right. Enough to change what's in their car and make it awesome. Right. And we do that every day. and We always have. The reaction from being able to personalize your car, be able to, you know, update the look, update the feel, change your interaction with the car that you already own, right, is astounding. And six out of ten people walking past that car hopped in the car and touch and feel the interior and goes, oh, my God, this is one of the nicest interiors in this entire building. You're like, yes. <laughs> I mean, it was. I mean, it, 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 when you look it, at it something like a, a new Lexus or those sort of things, I mean, you you had a high-end interior in a 2002 Land Rover. Well, and, and people were astounded that it was a used car. And so, uh, you know, four days of 12-hour days explaining to people, this is this car started out as a $2,500 car, right? Junker. You know, we spent about two grand getting it running perfect, runs and drives awesome. We probably spent 10 total, if we count the entire custom interior and sound deadening of the vehicle and new carpets and audio that's future tech and astounding sounding and doing a wrap on the outside and doing a full color change and change the look and change the style and completely update it. Well, okay, so you've got a $15,000 project. That's one of the coolest cars in the entire auto show. Right. Well, there are no $15,000 cars at the auto show. Right. Like, everything in the auto... Right. Uh, Honda Civic is $35,000 these days. Well, if you load it up, I mean, you can start in the 20s, but yeah, if yeah, you load it up. Yeah, but nobody buys the one in the 20s. They right. always want the one that's all loaded up. Well, the, the interesting point to that was either a base, buy a base model car and let's make it astounding right for the same money as the optioned out car right but that looks and touches and feels and is completely unique in yours right and is as astronomically better or conversely instead of taking the massive depreciation trading in the car that you already have let's just update it that, and i think that's the brilliant idea and that's what what it is sean what you had a question for peter so we all know I got in trouble for shooting off the cannon that was attached to this car. How many people actually came up asking you to shoot that thing? Uh, 20 people an hour? Yeah. I mean, everybody wanted to see that. It, w it was really cool. And you had to say, uh, no, they've already threatened to throw us out. Because of me. I'm sorry, people. It's okay. But going from the, uh, the bottom stairs and hitting the top of the outside windows, <laughs> um, yeah, that was a... 
It was a very, very powerful device. I think device. it was the whizzing past the security guards here that got us really into trouble. <laughs> so people just need to learn how to aim it, I guess, better. And uh, He says uh, I wasn't aiming. So, start, so starting with an older car, I just switched. I sold my old 240 and, and, and got a 2007 V70R. Um, as far as, obviously, I think the stereo needs to be updated from, you know, being eight years old. What kind of price range are we talking about as far as, you know, initial... Uh, startup, moving into some new technology, some kind of Bluetooth streaming, and, and some of the new technology that's out there. Sure. Well, I mean, the range is uh, very wide and open. Most people end up somewhere in the, say, 500 to $2,000 range. That, that encompasses probably 90% of our customers, right? Yes, there are cheaper solutions that will function, but it really does help to update the tech. And then also while you're out at it, if you're replacing the electronics in the dash, Update the sound while you're at it. You know, add amplification and the equalization. You think about that. You buy a new car and the, the tech package is usually $2,500. So that's actually cheaper than adding a tech package in a, in a new car. Right? No, that's exactly the point. Right. That's, that's exactly the point. As, and when you actually sit and touch and feel and listen to a car that you've done, a, say, a $2,000 project to, people are astounded. They're like, this is so much better than what I even thought you were talking about. Yes, exactly. We like to make it awesome. Everybody's happy that way. Genia, what was the most asked question about Project Discovery? Probably the most asked question is, how much does it cost to do this to me, my car? All right. I mean, absolutely. So um, we knew when we started this that we uh, we were going to get that sort of question once we did it. The, the big question is now we have to come up with some ideas of what we do next. We, uh, we're we hoping that we could convince the Grimm guys to let us do something with them uh, in the future. We, we're we going to get our team together again and do some brainstorming because I know you'll have some ideas, Peter. Oh, absolutely. And uh, we have to decide what will be project, uh, whatever it will be called, 2015 this year. And, of course, you can always send us information if you have ideas. Uh, just go to our uh, tweet, uh, Twitter or our Facebook and put in test miles. Send us your ideas of what our next project discovery should be. Uh, what's project discovery missing, Peter, finally? What else do we need to do to it? I think we're, we're just about done, aren't we? Yeah, I think we're done. I think we should, uh, you know... We should take it and put it in the new showroom of the new Mobile West. There you go. We'd but, love to sit in there, but where are you going to shoot the tennis balls? Well, you know. Is there someone got, across the road you want to hit with the tennis balls? We've got the, <laughs> the, the new building uh, that, that we're actively moving into now. We should be grand opening um, April 15th is what we're shooting for. At this All right. Point. Uh, tax, day. tax day. Well, you know, everybody <laughs> yeah, we, will have their taxes back. We we need a fi we have a good idea. Yeah, spend your taxes on <clears throat> uh, on buying a new audio or interior or crafting your new car. Yeah, making it the way you want it to be, All not right. the way they built it. That's, Perfect. That's our vision. How do we find Mobile West? Uh, MWPDX.us or give us a call 503-257-0488. And uh, the, the new building after... April 15th, will be fully live and operational, is 2111 Northeast MLK. Excellent. So I've been there. Yeah, we're only moving six blocks from our current location, but uh, it used to be... Uh, a dealership. Well, it used to be the BMW dealership. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's a large definitely... space. It's secured parking. The empire is expanding. Uh, you know, we're evolving. Yes. We do way more than just car stereos. Right. Uh, we're going to talk. We're going to have you in a lot more times because uh, between now and the end of the year, um, hopefully on a monthly basis, because we've got so much more to talk about. I still do kind of want to put a remote start system in that, that you can operate from your um, your cell phone because oh. I like that. I only have one car key left for Project Discovery because we managed to lose everything oh. else, and I kind of want to rather than pay. You know what is it? One hundred and fifty dollars to get a new car key with a you know key fob, or two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. I might as well just get a cell phone that I can start the car with and do all that sort of stuff. Well, absolutely. I mean, oh, do you know anyone that would be able to do that for me, Peter? Yeah, I think the guy. I think the guys at Mobile West. Oh, yeah, excellent. I think Look they at that do that segue. every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Peter Clover from Mobile West. Uh, you can find them, of course, on Facebook as well. Or if you need any uh, questions from Mobile West, direct them to us here at Test Miles, and we'll pass them along for you. When we come back, it's the much-anticipated news quiz. How much have the in-studio team learnt about what was in the news? We'll put Genia, Sean, and Oli to the test when Test Miles returns. I'm Nick Miles. Like 
like NASCAR, but with one right turn. Testmiles.com. Would you like to keep informed all week long about what's going on in the automotive world? Join us at Twitter, Testmiles, or at Testmiles.com. Here's a fun fact to impress your friends. The Dodge Caravan was one of the first modern minivans to ever be built and has been Dodge best-selling vehicle since. Wow. The Caravan. There's a shout-out to Brad who couldn't make it. Yeah. A shout-out to Brad and his minivan-loving plan. <laughs> uh, this is the part of the show when we like to see how knowledgeable our in-studio team has been in this week's uh, car industry, which means we will have our news quiz. So has everybody got their buzzers ready? Yes. We have? Yes. You want to test them? Let's test them. Let Genia buzzer. Uh, Oli? Uh, that was me too. Oh, you together? Yeah. And Sean? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we tested them. <laughs> there it works. <laughs> All right, there we go. Jenya, are you kicking the table? No. Yes. I can hear it from here. All right, who will be building their newest engine in Cleveland? Sean? That's going to be Ford. They're planning on making over 4 million EcoBoost engines with the Mustang including needing now an EcoBoost engine. They're going to invest $200 million into Cleveland and add 450 new jobs. Excellent point for Sean. Uh, does GM have enough money to battle who? Oli? Um, I guess that's still, still to be seen. They're going to be battling a lot of companies that are coming up with a lot of new technology between Apple, Google. Um, you have Tesla. For what it costs them to invest the car, obviously we've heard stuff about the new Bolt and things like that to try to compete, but we'll we'll see. They want to expand the Cadillac lineup as well um, from 6 to 12 by 2020. So, so we'll the question see. is, we don't know if they have enough money to buy I don't know if there's Apple. an answer yet. All right. Which, uh, which GM age-old rivalry plans to build a Chevy Bolt rival? That's me. John. <laughs> um, Ford's actually trying to compete with them because they're getting hearing about all the hype with the new Bolt. Not the Volt, but the Bolt. And Ford wants to come out with a competitor with that. All right. Which sports manufacturer is planning on making an SUV? No one? Oh, Genia. That would be Lotus. All right. They've said for a long time that that they, they would make an SUV. They had a 2006 APX concept, and at Geneva, the CEO said that a new SUV would reinvent the category. Wait, I, so I'm confused. Did, did, did Lotus coat totally, did, did Lotus actually <laughs> make any cars in the U.S. right now? Do they sell any cars in the U.S.? No? Yeah, no, they, they've got so. the Evora. The Evora. Yeah. The Evora. But is it for sale in the U.S.? New? I I've, I've seen I've seen some. No, a new? They, yeah, they do, because there's... No, they don't. Not Lotus new? don't sell any cars new in the U.S., so they're building an SUV that they can't sell here anyway. <coughs> hmm. wonder what's going on over at Lotus right now. Perhaps they've taken a consignment of something from Thailand recently. I don't know. Uh, okay, next question for you. Uh, who, Tesla is worried about what car being made. Holy. Well, I, I think that this is referring to the, the hydrogen Toyota that's coming out. It's called the, I want to say it's the, the Mirai. Right. M-I-R-A-I. -I. So yeah. they're going to go into full production with the hydrogen fuel cell car. Um, something that we've been talking about more and more with more stations opening up in California, Japan, other places with a new focus on hydrogen. So that might, uh, that might take a ding in their market. I will tell you, and this is a prediction, you should write this down somewhere, put it in an envelope, put it on the top shelf and bust it out. Which will be true, hydrogen is going to be the one thing that's going to derail Tesla. Absolutely. All right, we're out of time. No more questions this morning. Uh, we will be back next week with another fabulously packed show. I'm going to spend some time in Austin uh, with VW this week and in Phoenix with Ford, test driving some of their new product. We'll find out all about that on next week's show. Until then, follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, or go to testmiles.com. You're listening to Test Miles and FM News 101 KXL. I'm Nick Miles. Throw it in neutral and coast in with testmiles.com.